Now, let's join Ace Broadcaster, Mamode Akuga, as he takes us inside the Niger Delta. Hello out there and welcome to the program. It's Inside the Niger Delta, the authentic voice of Nigeria's oil-rich region. I am Mamode Akuga. We begin today's edition of the program with a trip to Bayelsa State, where the citizens have continued to express their concern over security issues ahead of the 2019 general elections. From there, we'll move to River State to bring you an update on the internal crisis rocking the All Progressives Congress APC in River State. According to Senator Magnus Abe, who represents the River State Southeast Senatorial District in the National Assembly, former Governor Ruti Miyamichi is responsible for the division within the fold of the APC in the state. Details of the allegation will, of course, be brought to you in the course of the program. Next on our lineup is on the recently concluded Midwestern Summit in Asaba, the Delta State Capital. The outcome of the meeting of the defunct Midwest region, now comprising Edo and Delta states, was a call for the restructuring of the Federation to reflect the Midwest as an integral part of the country. And finally on the program today, we'll bring to you the position of Governor Henry Seriaka Dixon on national unity as canvassed during the burial of his mother, late Mrs. Gold Coast Dixon, recently at Toru Angama in the tiny local government area of Delta State. Inside the Niger Delta, we'll be back after this time out. Don't go away. Inside the Niger Delta. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, the program is Inside the Niger Delta, the authentic voice of Nigeria's oil-rich region. If recent developments in BIOS state are anything to go by, then there is certainly cause for worry as the 2019 general elections inch closer. Concerned about a recent surge in crime rates in the midst of a growing political tension, Bielsons are calling for a decisive measures to assure peaceful, credible, and acceptable polls come 2019. Correspondent Tekena Amirfuri tells us more. On the eve of the 2019 general elections, the mood in Bielsa State is defined by anxiety and apprehension over the conduct of the forthcoming polls. It is a straight contest for political dominance in the oil-rich state between the governing People's Democratic Party and the opposition All Progressives Congress, both of which are currently engaged in word of words over alleged plots to scuttle the forthcoming elections. The People's Democratic Party and Governor Henry Seriaki Dixon were the first to express misgivings about the process leading to the elections when recently they raised the alarm that no fewer than seven police commissioners were deployed to the state in 10 weeks, alleging that it was a calculated attempt to further reconfigure the state security architecture in favor of the All Progressives Congress. In the last two months, we have had almost eight commissioners of police. And you don't need to look closer to know that there is a sinister game going on, a calculated plan, a calculated agenda to disorganize and destabilize and create insecurity in a state that we have worked so hard to stabilize in the last um, almost seven years. And so we call on the federal government, we call on the federal authorities, we call on all security agencies, all the heads of federal security agencies to conduct themselves in a manner that will not constitute a threat to the peace, order, good governance and stability of our country or any state. While the APC chairman in Bielsa State, Amos Jotun, and the state publicity secretary, Dofie Ola, refused to comment on Governor Dixon's claim when contacted, Bielsans have continued to react to the controversy trailing the incessant deployment of police commissioners to the state. If you want the police to do their job, allow them to come and do their job. Stay here, let them know the environment, let them know the people they are working with. When you are posted to a state, you are supposed to know the environment. Some of these guys, when they were brought, they barely knew where they were posted to before they were removed again. The law that establishes Nigerian police says there is need for transfer and the life. So why should we question if a police 
Commissioner is being transferred. It's the normal routine. Another source of concern for most Bayelsans is the rumored disbandment of the state-funded security outfit, Operation Doakbo, which was established in 2012 by the restoration government of Governor Seriake Dixon to stem the tide of violent crimes in the state. I believe uh, that it has really uh, messed up the security challenges at the state level, whereby lives are no longer secured and the state is at stake. Reacting to the alleged disbandment of Operation Duakbo, the current police commissioner in Bayelsa State, Joseph Mukan, told newsmen recently that he had no knowledge about the development. It's not operating under the state command. They are independent and they report directly to the governor. Though he's commanded by a policeman, a senior police officer, but their activities, they don't take the command into consideration. So when we notice the withdrawal, we try to ask questions. But nobody is coming up with any clear reason for withdrawing the vehicles. But it's unfortunate. If we are shouting that crime, crime, crime in Bayelsa, if an action like that is to be taken, at least being collaborators in fighting crime within Bayelsa, we should be informed. But nobody inform us. Not a few Bayelsans have described the recent happenings in their state as foreboding signs of what to expect at the forthcoming elections in a politically volatile environment with track record of widespread electoral violence. For the fact that Bayelsa has been stagged as a violent state all over this period, all of us will be involved to make sure that there's a reduced violence during the election. In the build-up to the 2019 general elections, allegations and counter-allegations by the two dominant political parties are hinged on a perfected plan to stockpile arms to cause mayhem during the forthcoming elections, a development that would most likely compel the state to relapse into another orgy of violence witnessed during the 2011 and 2015 general elections. Only a fortnight ago, the Bielsa state government received the report of a judicial commission of inquiry on the 2015 election violence, described as unprecedented in the entire electoral history of the state. While the state government has called for the white paper on the report to facilitate the punishment of electoral offenders, the ordinary citizens of Bielsa state have maintained that the onus is on the politicians and their parties to avert a likely new cycle of violence in Bielsa state. Who are the major players in this instance? We are talking about the politicians. They are the people that will determine whether the election will be free, violent free, fair or not. Their character, the statements they make, the way they conduct themselves. That's why I have always been on the side of advocating that politicians should do well to educate their members, their followers, on how they conduct themselves in time of party, um, what they call it, uh, campaigns. And even the election proper, we saw what happened in the party primaries, ordinary party primaries, people are killing themselves. It's unnecessary. Then talk less of the general election itself properly. What's going to happen? For his part, the resident electoral commissioner of the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, in Bielsa State, Dr. Cyril Omoregbe, has assured that the electoral umpire is working tirelessly to midwife credible elections in Bielsa State. We are meeting with uh, the head of security organizations uh, towards coming up with uh, the same strategies in terms of uh, try to dissuade people from buying vote, uh, you know, PVCs and at the same time uh, stem the tide of violence in our uh, you know, state. Um, apart from meeting, we also have an ongoing meeting in uh, you know, INEC as an organization in Abuja and uh, hopefully we we're constantly working in terms of our, I call it, continuous improvement process in terms of making sure that uh, the 2019 election turns out to be very, very successful and hitch free. The assurance given by the electoral umpire to collaborate with security agencies in protecting the integrity of the forthcoming elections is viewed as a welcome development. But the people are calling for a rigorous enlightenment campaign that will sensitize the electorate on how to influence the outcome of the forthcoming elections.
Because the early warning signal has already started in the Niger Delta area, specifically in rivers by Esa and part of Delta states and other parts of the country. So we need to look at the proliferation of arms coming into the various states. Our advice is that uh, the youth should not die for anybody during an election. Ask them, the politicians themselves, to bring their children, their grandchildren to be at the forefront during the elections. In Bielsa State, the need to stem the ugly tide of election violence during the forthcoming elections cannot be overemphasized as its outcome would most likely affect the conduct of the all-important governorship election scheduled for December 2019. Moving on, we go to neighboring River State, where the lawmaker representing River State Southeast Senatorial District in the National Assembly, Magnus Abe, says the Minister of Transportation, Rotimi Amechi, should be held responsible for the factionalization of the All Progressives Congress, APC, in River State. Senator Abe, while addressing his supporters recently, traced the current division within the fold of the party to former Governor Amechi's unilateral decision to jettison the collective agreement of the APC to correct an existing imbalance in the political equation of River State. Since the creation of River State, Rivers East has produced governors, both civilian and military. Rivers West has produced governors, civilian governors, and military governors. Rivers Southeast has never produced a governor. And we agreed in the NPC that the position of the governor of River State should be zoned to River Southeast Senatorial District. People who love justice and who want to stand by what is right, they don't just have a duty, you have an obligation to oppose injustice where it comes. And that is what we said we will do. We will fight for justice in River State. River Southeast Senatorial District cannot be different from the other senatorial districts. So we will fight for justice in that respect. Senator Abe alleged that in spite of efforts to reconcile all differences arising from conflicting interests before the commencement of the party's congresses, former Governor Amechi was bent on foisting his decision on the party in disregard of the likely consequences of his actions. The one-time Commissioner of Information and former Secretary of the River State Government, however, says he will remain in the APC and contribute to his growth and development as a major stakeholder. We had a meeting, all of us had a meeting of all the leaders. It was the first time that we were sitting together across the divide. Whether you are with Abe, you are with Ameji, you are with anybody, we all sat together. And we agreed on how we will handle the congresses to keep the party together, where everybody will have an even chance to participate in the activities of the party. We had that meeting and we agreed. Chief Ikanya called the meeting. We even set up a technical committee to go and put that agreement into action. As soon as the minister landed in Port Harcourt, he carried all the things that we decided together and threw it into the crash ground. He took the Congresses to Intels and said that all those who do not agree with him are out. We will not leave the party. Because we built the APC. Was it done by ghosts? In responding to Senator Abe's claim that former Governor Amechi's decision to jettison a pact adopted by the APC on power rotation in River State, a former majority leader of the River State House for Assembly, Honorable Chidi Lloyd, has challenged the lawmaker to back his claim with an evidence. If Senator Abe says there was an agreement uh, that says that Rivers East will produce the next governor, which means he has a copy of the agreement and he knows the signatories. So you go back and ask him for the agreement. Then I can comment. The Rivers people have seen through all the characters who are politicians today in River State. And they have their judgments about every one of us. With what is going on in River State, especially in the APC, 
there is a phase of politicians that are walking themselves away from the people. And I sympathize with them. Given the situation on ground, there is no gain saying the fact that the APC will be contesting the forthcoming general elections in River State with a divided house. Now we go to the Midwest. The peoples of the old Midwestern region, now comprising Edo and Delta states, arising from a one-day summit organized recently in Asaba, the Delta state capital, have lent their voice to the calls for the restructuring of the Nigerian Federation. Under the envisaged restructured federation, they look forward to reclaiming their lost glory as the backbone of national unity and development. The Midwest Summit, convened by Dr. Pedro Basaki, was to determine the future of the defunct Midwest region of Nigeria, which metamorphosed into the old Bendel state upon the creation of 12 states by the administration of former head of state, Lieutenant General Yakubu Gawan retired, and later split into Edo and Delta states by former military president Ibrahim Babengida. Participants at the one-day summit frowned upon the continued political balkanization of the Midwestern peoples of Nigeria, comprising the 12 ethnic nationalities of current-day Delta and Edo states. They maintained that the Midwest region, the only major administrative unit of Nigeria created by due constitutional process, has served as a pillar of national unity and development until it became a victim of marginalization and injustice in the current political dispensation. We are of the firm position that Nigeria has been badly run for many years as a concomitant effect of the dysfunctional structures foisted on the country in the aftermath of the forcible seizure of political power by the military starting in January 1966. There must be a structural deconstruction of the Nigerian Federation as it is presently constituted. That government and representatives of the Nigerian people in parliament should consciously hear the voices of reason that have called for a refederalization of the country using all available constitutional means while factoring the interests and aspirations of all ethnic nationalities in Nigeria. While pledging their support for a united Nigeria, champions of the Midwest movement, however, rejected what they referred to as the current lopsided structure of the Federation, which has bred disunity, political instability, and national underdevelopment. There is no market for APC. There is no private market for PDP. There is no market for any political party. You have one common market. So you have one common objective. You have one common destiny. Anybody who is an obstruction to restructuring is an obstruction to your destiny. When you take a dispassionate look at Nigeria as it is, Nigeria is not working. And if we have been doing things this way with the present result and continue doing things the way we have done and expect a different result, then we are fooling ourselves. On the way forward for the country, the Midwest movement insists that there must be a structural deconstruction and reconstruction of the Nigerian Federation as it is presently constituted. To this end, the group has vowed to reserve their support for political parties and candidates committed to the cause of restructuring the country along the lines of fiscal federalism. All three presidential candidates who attended the summit pledged to work towards achieving a restructured Nigeria. Why we must restructure? Nigeria is not yet a nation. We're a nation in the womb waiting to be born. For now, we're a country and a broken country at that. What we seek is justice for all Nigerians. We want to say enough of the tyranny, I mean, tyranny of the majority over the minority. From the 1999 Constitution, without controversy, many states, ethnic groups in this nation are 
operating at a very high disadvantage. And that cannot continue, it must be corrected. Politically, there must be restructuring. Delta State Governor Dr. Ifai Okunwa was represented by Kingsley Emu, Honorable Commissioner for Economic Planning, while his Edo State counterpart, Godwin Obaseki, was absent at the recently concluded Midwest Summit tagged Asaba 2018. Amidst the political turbulence across the Niger Delta in the countdown to the 2019 general elections, Bielsa State Governor Henry Seraka Dixon has called for greater national unity and cohesion to safeguard the Nigerian project. Siraka Dixon made a call recently at the burial of his mother, late Mrs. Gold Coast Dixon, at Toru Angiama in Patani local government area of Delta State. The remains of late Mrs. Gold Coast Dixon was laid to rest in her hometown, Toru Angiama in Delta State. Until her demise, the matriarch of the Dixon family was a unifying force in her community. She's fondly remembered as a virtuous woman who instilled discipline in her children. Toru Orua community in Sagbama local government area of Bios State, where she spent the rest of her life in marriage, stood still for late Mrs. Dixon. Those who came to pay their last respect to the mother of the Bios State governor were President Muhammadu Buhari, represented by Boss Mustafa, secretary to the government of the federation. Vice President Yemi Oshibajo and ex President Goodluck Jonathan. You can see from the uh, children she's leaving behind, uh, they are product of a disciplined woman. A woman that was industrious, a woman that was hardworking, a woman that was God fearing. Uh, with the meager resources, I read her, uh, I mean, uh, her, the details of her life that she was running a small business, a kiosk business. With meager resources, she was able to train. Uh, seven children, one of them becoming the executive governor of uh, Bielsa State. I mean, uh, she's up there rejoicing that she departed in a very grand style. So for us to be here in these numbers, from all over the country, from the north, west, south and east, is because she has produced a kind in the name of Governor Siriaki Dixon. Others who came to sympathize with the Dixon family were presidential candidates of the People's Democratic Party, Atiku Abubakar, and his running mate, Peter Obi, Deputy Senate President, Ike Ekwere Mado, Speaker of the House of Representatives, Yakubu Dogara, state governors elected on the platform of the APC and the PDP. Today we can all bear testimony that late Madam Gold Coast Dixon was a perfect mother. Therefore, on behalf of myself and those who have not been represented in these tributes, our prayers and thoughts are with the Dixon family. If it were possible, Governor Dixon would have done everything to keep her alive today. Well, because it is the will of God that she depart at this moment, this has also uh, happened. She did not die in vain. Being a mother entails that you love someone more than yourself. And uh, it must take a very, very brave woman. I can tell you we have a lot of women, but not all of them are mothers. Mama was a mother indeed. Governor Seraki Dixon used the occasion to call on Nigerians to embrace the ideals of national unity and cohesion at such a critical period in the life of the country. Our country is bigger than politics. Politics is just a tiny aspect of the life of our nation and it's a tiny aspect of even our individual lives. You have the economic dimensions, you have the national security dimensions, you have so many other dimensions that call for collaboration. All of us should profess love for our country, but we can disagree on how we get there. Those disagreements are normal and we should even have more of it. But there are certain aspects of our humanity that should bind us together. And this is a human event. And I thank the president and the leadership of the federal government, all of them appreciating that fact. And my colleagues and all leaders of Bayelsa, Delta Rivers, and my colleague governors, party chairman and all of them, everybody for being here. Late Mrs. Gold Coast Dixon passed on in August this year 
at the age of 72. Well, we cannot agree less with Governor Seraka Dixon in his call for national unity and cohesion as a catalyst for national development. Well, it's on this note we bring the program to a close. Inside the Niger Delta will be back next week, same time on this station. And you can also stay connected by following us on social media on the handles showing on your screen. On behalf of the production crew, I am Mamode Akuga. Thanking you all for staying tuned. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.